Hey, everybody. Welcome back to the show. These are the Cabral Host Calls, the weekend edition of the Cabral Concept. Glad to have you back here today. Looking forward to going over probably a half a dozen brand new questions. If you didn't tune in yesterday, that was episode 2759. And if you'd like to follow along with today's questions from our community, head on over to stephencabral.com slash 2760. Keep in mind that I don't do any prep work for the questions and I never edit them in any way. I read them out loud and uh, I try to give you my best second opinion, right, to maybe some other opinions that you've gotten before. Not saying one is better than the other. Um, I want to look at it from a root cause perspective. So no medical advice, medical treatment plans, medical cures, or medical diagnosis, but rather peeling back the onion and really looking at what could be going on here. All right, so let's get started. The first question is from Stacy, and Stacy is asking, Hi, Dr. Brawl. I hope you're having a wonderful day. Thanks, Stacy. Hope you are as well. I have a quick question for you. What is your opinion on metformin? My functional medicine doctor and endocrinologist prescribed it to me to help with insulin resistance and some of my dysautonomia, symptoms like sensory sensitivity, etc. I've been reading the book on by Lifespan by David Sinclair, and he brings up the amazing things metformin is used for, and in some countries, you don't even need a prescription for it. I found it to be very, very interesting, and I'm considering trying it, but still nervous. Have you dug deep into the metformin rabbit hole? What's your opinion? Thanks for everything. Um, I have. I've dug as deep as you can in on, on metformin. Uh, very much respect David Sinclair and the majority of his work. Uh, I very much appreciate uh, I am not on board with any medications as of yet that should be that are being taken uh, prophylactically, that are being used essentially off use to, in my opinion, fix something that has an underlying root cause. Okay, so what I want to do is if these medications are going to be used like rapamycin or metformin, et cetera, et cetera, let's use them with a little bit more research. Let's use them when there are no underlying root cause imbalances, maybe as like icing on the cake. I'm not ready to use them myself. I wouldn't use them in my practice, nor can I prescribe medication in general. So what I would say is if someone's having issues with insulin resistance or dysautonomia, metformin is not necessarily the thing to use for that because um, I understand for insulin resistance, but like with dysautonomia, well, what caused it, right? And how are you, how is it being fixed? Because lowering your glucose alone is not going to fix dysautonomia. So I'm more of a root cause individual. I like running things like the big five. I like running blood work. I like figuring out what the problem is, fixing it and not turning towards medication, which in my opinion, not my opinion, it's what they do, they mask the symptoms. So why do you have insulin resistance? Why do you have dysautonomia? When you answer that, then you don't need the metformin. So that's, that's how I look at it. And we can have different opinions, and that's okay too. All right, Ryan's up next. Hello, Dr. Baral. I want you to know I'm learning so much from you, and I'm extremely thankful. Thank you, Ryan. I appreciate you. I have a question for you and your opinion on medical medium's approach to healing with all that fruit. I'm learning a lot from you and I've done several protocols as well as detox and fatlosity, still having issues with fatty liver, hypothyroidism, hormone imbalances, etc. I've been reading some of uh, Medical Medium's healing protocols. I bought his books. They make a lot of sense. Yet eating all that fruit, being pre-diabetic still sits hard with me, even though he claims it will reverse all these conditions. I'm confusing myself with all the books that I read, podcasts, etc. I've done your big five laps. Okay, so... Um, two things. I have lots of podcasts on Anthony William and the medical medium. So just go to stephencabral.com slash podcasts, type in medical medium, you'll be able to find it or type in Anthony William. I speak highly of him. I have nothing bad to say about him. However, keep in mind, his protocols should not be used, in my opinion, long term because they are catabolic on the body. Now, they are very cleansing. I wouldn't say detoxing. Detox is different. I have a whole podcast on what the difference is between a cleanse and a detox. But I'm actually a big believer in fruit. I'm a big believer in even doing things like juice cleanses or other things like that every once in a while. So keep in mind, I'm not against that. Two things can be true. I appreciate what he's doing. I believe in what he's doing. But also, I do know that you will end up with vitamin and mineral and other catabolic-based imbalances, especially for vatas or ectomorphs and mesomorphs, um, if you continue on with that long term. And that's because I test, like I run all of these laps. Now, if you've done your big five, you will have gotten a plan then for low thyroid 
for hormone imbalances, uh, to do detoxification, et cetera. So like, I just want to share that with you. Am I all about fruit for diabetics? No. Do I think that fruit causes diabetes? No. Two things can also be true. And that is because these cell membranes have been damaged by a lot of um, improper fats in the diet that then don't allow the sugar molecules, the glucose, to actually get into the cell in the first place. I have a whole podcast on carbohydrates do not cause diabetes, so definitely check that out. But once you have it, once you have insulin resistance, then high levels of glucose is not good because no matter what, it's not getting into your cells. So we have plans that help people to slowly but surely improve insulin resistance, improve their cell membrane health, and then be able to transition to more fruit. Because you know I'm a believer in that. Seven to nine servings of fruits and vegetables every day. The medical and medium I, medium I are not far apart. I just use, um, and again, this is not in any derogatory terms whatsoever. Um, we just do things differently. I just want to put it that way. I'm just putting it that way. We do things differently. I have specific protocols that you can find at stevencabal.com uh, slash shop, which just takes you over to Equal Life. And I do things. I test. I implement protocols. I retest to make sure that it's working and that it's worked. I make adjustments as needed until someone gets results. There's just no guesswork at all. So, And I don't want to say that in an arrogant way at all. It's not. It's literally using integrative health, all the best disciplines. It's not, None of it's me, right? I provide the body as a practitioner with what it needs. Give the body what it has for deficiencies, give it that, take away its toxicities, and I step out of the way. I enable the human body in all of its wisdom to heal itself. Medical medium's trying to do the same thing. So appreciate his work. All right, Robert's up next. Robert says, hi, Dr. Brawl. I found your podcast incredibly valuable. So thank you so much for all that you do. It's very much appreciated. I appreciate you, Robert. Thank you. I recently went to acupuncture and did a quantum resonance magnetic analyzer, handheld health detector analyzer, which showed I have moderate level of rheumatoid arthritis coefficient. I don't have the symptoms of RA, but my acupuncturist believes I might be pure RA. I have very high anxiety as shown on an organic acids test. So I'm current working to reducing and have ordered the CBO protocol. I would be interested in hearing your story on how you recovered. Did you have joint pain with your RA or just pre RA? Were you on medication too before you healed naturally? Any advice for me? to not go from pre-RA to RA. Thank you again. Okay, so I don't know what the machine is that your acupuncturist used. I just know that it can't diagnose pre-RA or rheumatoid arthritis. So I'm just putting that out there. Doesn't mean that they're not incorrect. It doesn't mean that they're not correct. They very well may be correct. Okay, when I had the first signs of rheumatoid arthritis, I had it in the joints of my thumb, okay? And uh, again, keep in mind, my parents and all four of my grandparents are rheumatoid arthritis. So this was not crazy for me to get it. It was crazy that I was 17 when I started to get it. And so that, that was an issue, 17 through essentially 20 years old. I wasn't on any medication for it. I was on medication for Addison's disease and POTS and acid reflux and insomnia and allergies and all sorts of stuff, that's for sure. Um, and then I stopped all of it. And I don't recommend that necessarily either, but I just said, I can't mask my symptoms because this is when I started to learn about natural health. I have to figure this out and that's what I'm going to do. And it was many painful years. Luckily now though, I'm able to take that wisdom from all the mentors and practitioners I've had and now put it into a system that I believe will help people heal within three to six months, typically maximum for people with really debilitating deep autoimmune issues, et cetera maybe six to 12 months, but that's maximum. That's it. I mean, that, that's the bottom line. And so again, can't provide any medical advice, medical healing treatments, diagnosis, cures. But what we do is we work on the underlying root causes. So that's what I would do. And healing your gut and your stress is a great first place to start. So it sounds like, Robert, you are on the right path. All right. Let's get in another question. Oh, this one's from Robert too. Sorry, sorry, Dr. Ball, me again, just a follow-up question. You haven't had RA for a long time now, but does it still show up in your blood test or does your blood test show no signs of disease? My blood test shows no signs of disease. So um, at one point, all these elevations were there, but I no longer have rheumatoid arthritis, 
no longer have Addison's disease, no longer have type 2 diabetes, uh, no longer have the really high eosinophils, all these different things that I had. So yeah, th so I, I no longer have it, right? So people say, well, it's in remission. Okay, sure. Yeah, because I had the same genetics, right? <laughs> but it was in remission all my life until 17. For my parents, it was in remission all their life until they reached their like later 40s and early 50s. Um, mine is mine was in remission from when I was born to 17, and then I had it for about two and a half, three years, uh, and then it took me a couple more or so natural health based years, and then it's been in remission since. So yeah, however you want to look at it, but no, I do not have those diseases anymore because they're not there. I have no symptoms, and they're not on blood work. All right. Thanks, Robert, for clarifying. Amanda's up. Amanda says, hello, Dr. Brawl. I'm a 34-year-old dentist vata type. I suffer from many eye floaters, uh, tinea, versica, white spots on nails, and a left ear that is always pounds, heartbeat, audible. I haven't had this question in a while, but I have had this question many, many times. I have a weird tingling between shoulder blades after eating. Yes, okay. I eat cruciferous vegetables daily. One serving, my palms and soles turn yellow. Uh, turn, they turn yellow while I'm pregnant two years ago. Milk thistle and liver herbs are also causing tingling in my back. Tried DNS for four months, 21 day detox, but it didn't help with the yellowing. I did your liver flush once and passed hundreds of stones. Why would one turn yellow after cruciferous? Are they not good for me? Do you think phase one, phase two, or two and a half detox is impaired? If you could provide any explanation about the yellowing and or solutions and root cause for my symptoms, thanks. Okay, a lot going on here, but totally understand. Can't provide you any medical diagnosis or medical treatments. But however, um, cruciferous vegetables, it's not that they're hard on the liver, it's that they start to open up the liver in terms of liver conjugation and phase two detoxification. So it's like um, you eat them, the liver then actually begins to process these things. There can be more inflammation which actually happens as you're breaking things down, you could get the yellowing. Like it, it absolutely sounds like, and again, no medical diagnosis, a liver congestion-based issue. So again, I'm just wondering for you, um, the liver flush, great, that could be done. Again, I'm not giving you medical advice. Uh, if there's no um, impairment with a gallbladder, et cetera, you can find out if there is with a torso MRI uh, with non-contrast. You don't need to put any of the dye in your body. And... Um, you could do even, we were just talking about uh, the medical medium, right? You could do a juice fast for a week. Um, that would be uh, possible where you're just doing veggie-based juices to just clean things out. You could use apples, which contain malic acid to help to get that bio, bio flowing. You could use beet roots and even some beet greens, um, which are great to get the bile acid flowing as well. So although I can't give you the exact plan because I'm not working with you specifically, I haven't seen any of your labs. If it was me and I was just going by these symptoms, I would absolutely look at stress and liver congestion. Stress in terms of imbalanced minerals and electrolytes. I would run either the big five or the starter kit to look at those vitamins and minerals. And I would then look at what is going on with the liver and gallbladder that there might be this level of congestion? Rebounding, sauna. I mean, if you could read the rain barrel effect, I can't recommend that enough. Coffee enemas, um, read the rain barrel effect. It's literally free. If you live in the United States, you can get it at stephencabral.com. That's it. Just go there, click on the free book. Um, you just pay shipping, which is like $7.95. I pay over $7 to print the book. You just pay for the shipping. We ship it anywhere in the U.S. If you don't live in the U.S., you can get the rain barrel effect at stephencabral.com slash shop. And read that. Try to follow, if you can, those um, items in there. But the sauna, the rebounding, the coffee enemas, the uh, potentially detox or juicing, like to get things flowing, I think would be pretty tremendous. All right. Hopefully this was helpful. Thank you, everybody, for tuning into the show. I thank you. I appreciate you. I'll be back tomorrow with a Mindset and Motivation Monday. Hopefully it's the best way to start your week. All right. Take care, everybody. Thanks so much for tuning into today's show. Before you go, don't forget to hit that subscribe button. I want to make sure that you're getting our daily content, not missing out on anything. Functional medicine, wellness, weight gain, weight loss, anti-aging, living longer, stronger, and all of the most cutting edge research. And if there's any topics you want to hear, feel free to leave them in the comments below. Take care.